Hello, welcome to Magical Maiden's Jewelry Tutorials. I'm Magical Maiden, and today what I'm going to show you is how to make a choker necklace using sequences. So, I got a, a regular choker necklace, and they're usually 16 inches around, and you can find them anywhere. You can buy them in bulk, online at Rings and Things, and probably even on Amazon, and you can get them at craft stores. I don't think you could buy them in bulk, but they might be in packages of two to three in craft stores. And I use these quite a bit, and you can do a lot of things. You could put uh, tube beads all around it to make it thicker, and it's typically 16 inches around, but they do have the ones with the extenders on it if your neck is a little larger. So that's what I'm going to do. Or you can use the corded necklaces. Necklaces like these, they come in different colors. I just have the black. But I wanted to use a choker because I used one of these the last time for my necklace that I had made with the black and silver. Some of you may have seen it. And if you haven't, go check out my jewelry tutorial playlist on my channel because it has tons and tons of great new videos, especially the one I told, told you about my last one, making the necklace with materials and cardstock and everything. Okay, so the sequences I got come through to a package square and then these rounded and then this. It's kind of open so I have it in a box that kind of fell all over the place and then these big ones whoops okay so as you can see I have them all in here you should get a container because these don't seal shut and I got these all from Hobby Lobby they were like a dollar ninety nine to two dollars but I got like 50% off and Hobby Lobby always has some kind of sales okay so I also got these, but I'm not going to use these in today's craft. They have three different size sequins, small, medium, and large, and this was $1.99. And again, they always have sales. So I'm going to take these sequences, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably even put beads in between that. I haven't decided yet. but. I'm going to make a nice little necklace, a nice little choker necklace, and I'm going to put some of these between the beads and have them hanging in different lengths, the middle being the longest. Okay, I'm going to need some spacers. So what I did was I took a few different spacers and I might put them in between. Now I'm not really sure. They don't really, I think I'll take the iridescent ones out. They're a little too big. But I also have these kind of spacers, these rounded ones, but I don't think I want those either. If I need more of these, I can go get them out of my container. So right now though, I'm gonna put them in my little box so they don't roll away. And I'm going to get a few of these out now, if you get your fingerprints on there, don't worry. You can easily wipe them clean with a damp paper towel or cloth, okay? Because it's going to happen. You have to handle them. So another thing you're going to need is some jump rings. Got ones with different sizes. Have some six millimeters and four millimeters. I'm not really sure what I'm using yet. Now, if you like a bigger jump ring, because that'll make it go longer. If you use a shorter one, they'll be more close together. If you use a bigger one, it'll have a different look and they'll be spaced. And you don't have to use quite as much to get the length, which I might go with a bigger one. Now, some of you may have seen the jewelry tutorial that is up before this one on my jewelry tutorial playlist. And in that I used these little four millimeter jump rings. The next thing you're going to need is a push pin. Okay, and the reason why you need this is because there's only a hole on the top. There's not a hole on the bottom. And for the other ones, the hole is in the center. So this is going to push holes through so that we can easily use those, okay? 
Now, I do have to get a container for these so that it's not all over the place. Some of these come clear and some of these are iridescent. And I might mix some of the square ones in there. And then there's really tiny, tiny ones that are going to go at the bottom. Because you can't really make a hole at the bottom. Let me see if you're getting all this. There. So I'm going to do a bunch of different... I'm going to do a bunch of different lengths, but I have to figure out how I'm going to do it, which ones I'm using. But in the meantime, what I'm going to show you, and I showed you this if you've seen my earring tutorial using these sequences, the push pin. Now you're going to want to put something underneath because you don't want to ruin your desk or whatever top you're using. And then you have to line up the hole from the top to the hole in the bottom as best you can. You can use a ruler if you want to be precise. And don't go to the very bottom because if you make the hole then it can split and then it's useless. You're going to take your push pin and you're going to push and then you're going to see a dent. And then you're going to hold it and push it through. I kind of go like this. Make sure that it's there. And then there you go. So you're wanting to do your holes Second, first you want to decide what you're going to use. So I'm going to use one of those. And the reason why you want to work on the center one first is because that's going to be the longest. And you don't have to make two of that size. Okay. Now I have them, my <laughs> sequences fell all over the place. It's kind of hard to keep them all in a bag, but later I can go and fix it can make it any way you want. So for time purposes, I'm going to punch all the holes on the ones that I will be using next off camera because the first step is deciding what you're going to use because you don't want to punch holes until you know exactly what you're going to use and how you're going to do it. And then once you punch the holes, you're going to configure how, how you're going to all line them up and then you could go to the next step which is punching the holes, okay? So that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so now I'm going to poke the holes through the center ones. And what I'm doing is I have to see, so I used, I'm going to use this as a pointer, a six millimeter jump ring. See, that's a six millimeter jump ring for the top that's going to connect to the choker. And in the center, I used an eight millimeter because I want them to hang a little longer and I like the look of the jump ring. But if you'd rather just have the look of the sequences and not so much seeing the jump ring, then I'd go with the six millimeter, okay? You could go with a four millimeter as well, but that's a lot tinier as you can see. Um, but the six millimeter is going to go through the choker and then there'll be spacers and then there'll be uh, a 8 millimeter jump ring and another 8 millimeter. So that's what I'm going to do. The center piece is going to be the longest. So I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to do the side pieces and they're going to be the same length. They're going to be a little bit shorter than the center. And then we're going to make the third hanging one that's going to be even shorter than the second one, but they're going to be the same, and then so on and so forth throughout, okay? So I'm going to finish doing this centerpiece, and I'll show you that when it's done. Okay, so what I did, sorry about the fan kicking in, was I put this, I attached all this, and I stuck it onto the choker. Now it's not going to, sorry, now it's not going to stay there, but I had to try it on to see how far this went. You don't really want it to be too long so that it falls into your cleavage when you're wearing it, obviously. Uh, but you want it long enough because all the other pieces are going to be shorter and it's kind of going to go like that, okay? 
So I tried it on and I like it. Now again, I used a six millimeter up here and these are eight millimeter jump rings. And then in the very bottom, I used another six millimeter. Again, you can use all six millimeters or four millimeters, whatever you want. But it gives a different look when you've got the bigger, rounder uh, jump rings. If you want it tighter fitting, then I suggest you use the four millimeter. If you want it tighter but not too tighter, then use all the six millimeters. But if you want to look, you can combine all the different size jump rings. So when you do this project, make sure you have a variety of different sizes, like a 4mm, 6mm, and an 8mm jump ring handy so you can decide, okay? Any bigger, it won't sit nice. It'll stick out off of your chest. So just remember that when purchasing any jump rings or if you already have all the different sizes using them. You can try it. If you don't like it, you're going to have to remove them all though and connect it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my other two pieces that are going to be exactly alike that have to go down here. And I'm only going to probably make them go down to the square because then the other ones are going to be shorter and shorter and so on. So for time purposes, I'm going to do that off camera and then come back when that's done. Okay, so I've attached all of the beads and I even added spacers and it's hard to tell so I'm going to try to go like this and maybe I'll even put it on for you to see but I did it in I did it in a little different hold on I did it in different sizes so that the middle one is the longest and then I went now I could have went one more and just attached one thing there and then nothing there, but I wanted it like that. I didn't want it to go all the way around. And you really wouldn't see it that much if I went up anymore. And those are the spacers. Now you can use any kind of spacers you want, but I did do two. I did a spacer, then two spacers. Otherwise they start, all the sequences would fall on top of each other and then you wouldn't really see the the way it all hangs and everything, they'd be on top of each other, it would ruin the look. So let me put this neater so you can see. So really, uh, the last few I didn't use the 8mm uh, jump rings, I started just using the 6, but again, you could use all uniform or what have you. You can really just mix and match your jump rings, it's up to you. And. If you want to use all small ones, use all small ones. If you want to use medium ones or large ones, do that. Okay, so that's how it's going to look. I used all different shapes and different kinds. Now I'm going to try this on. Here it is. I'm not going to let you see me. I want you to focus on the necklace. But there it is. Like I said, I got to put a few more of these little top flat ones up there and I could have gone I could have put a little more of these ones at the very end up but you're not going to really see it and with my hair I wouldn't see it at all so that's what it looks like now you can definitely get a toothpick and a little E6000 glue so that these don't shift which I'm going to do later put a little glue right here on whatever you use the choker and then push down and it'll hold it. This way nothing's going to shift. Look at this. I love the way it looks and I made earrings to match which is in the jewelry tutorial. You make it similar. You just attach jump rings to each one. You poke the hole. You just take the sequences that you want, the shapes and sizes, poke the hole with the thumbtack and then go ahead and put your jump rings and then at the top attach a fish hook. That's my earrings and I have that jewelry tutorial before this one and then this I love it. I love the way it shimmers and shines and I'm going to let you get a better look. See? I mean, is that not nice? It's kind of, uh, I feel like I should go belly dancing or something, <laughs> you know, with the sequences and stuff like that. But I love it and I think you'll love it too. So if you love it and you like it, 
just if you love it or like it please give this video a like remember to share if you know anybody that might be interested in this and if you're not subscribed go ahead and do that now and remember to click that notification bell so you're notified when i upload my newest content and more great jewelry ideas for you to make so this is really affordable this is, uh, I wouldn't say a very fast craft because you have to punch holes. You do have to put the jump rings in. So that can be kind of time consuming. Other than that, it's a fast craft once they're all attached and then you just put it on your choker. And again, they have different chokers. You could buy them in bulk at rings and things or like two to three of them at like Hobby Lobby and Michaels and Joann's. Or you could just look on Amazon and buy them in bulk. And they're 16 inches around, but you can get the type of choker that has an extension to it uh, if your neck is a little larger. So go ahead and make this and let me know if you did. If you have any questions about this craft, please put it in the comment section. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in my videos. Bye.